How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi, and yes I am aware we got a sneak peek of Kingdom Hearts 3's opening. Keywords, sneak peek, this is not the full opening. So the way I'm gonna go at this is, I'm gonna cover a few interesting parts I've noticed, alright? So here goes. First thing, Sora standing on water, which looks to be Dawn. Looking back at Kingdom Hearts 1's and KH2's openings, we went from day, night, to dawn cycle. Riku standing in the beach, to Kairi sitting at the beach at sunset, and then we have night in Kingdom Hearts 2's opening. Now there is daylight as well in KH2's opening, yes. But one thing I did realize, each of our characters, Sora, Riku, and Kairi, have at least fallen into one category of day cycle. Riku being day, Kairi being night, and Sora being dawn. Day could symbolize the start of an adventure. Night representing all the hard paths Sora had to come across. Dawn could symbolize the beginning of the end, like a restart. Think of a reunion. Cage 1, they were all separated. Cage 2, they were almost together. Cage 3, they all fight together, as we notice at the end of this teaser. And notice how they have their Cage 2 outfits. So yeah, this is a sneak peek. Maybe we'll see their new outfits in the full opening. Now this, of course, I'm talking, you know, focusing on Sora, Riku, and Kairi mainly. Water represents life, aka heart, in Kingdom Hearts. If you lose a heart, you disappear to the darkness. Water also symbolizes your subconscious. This scene, in particular, Sora walking around with a bunch of data Sora-looking things, with a bunch of different abilities, Sora walking on water. I mean, it looks like it. The sky itself, I believe, is a reference to Sora's name. In Kingdom Hearts 1's opening, Sora was underwater. It symbolizes this overwhelming feeling. And then he stands, which means he's about to go through paths which are less difficult than before. Is it because of the presence of his friends? Now guys, I'm just going with the symbolism of, you know, standing above water. But really, Sora is still gonna encounter some difficulties in KH3, just looking at the chessboard foreshadowing, which I'll talk about the pieces later. But yes, to me, ultimately, Sora standing on water feels like, as I previously pointed out, the beginning of the end. Everything Sora went through, Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, Dream Drop Distance, he's reached this point. Like, they're about to face off with Zaynort. Like, just this scene, Sora, the sky and everything, Dawn, it gives you this this is it feel. Next, let's talk about uh, the opening overall, its purpose. Everything happens on the chessboard, well, specifically the fights. Young Xehanort just looks great in this opening, by the way, I just wanted to point that out. The trailer of the opening, it's a recap. I'm not too surprised considering KH2's opening had a recap of KH1, same goes for Dream Drop Distance. What we saw is not spoilerish, which I liked. The trailer has definitely some parts clipped out and put together. Don't forget, this is a sneak peek, it's not the full opening. Because people have been saying the music, oh, it's not synced with their movements and everything, but guys, they just edited this whole thing. Took out pieces, put them close together, and you know. So whatever chain of events that happens in this opening, in this sneak peek, do keep in mind it's been edited, okay? But that doesn't mean we don't get an overall feel of what's happening. The chess pieces young Xehanort is moving, they all call back to the events that happened. The first piece he moves, it's hard to tell, but if you pay close attention, if you take the time to look at the frames individually, it looks to be the Void Gear, aka Vanitas. Bam, we got Birth by Sleep. Vanitas playing a big role in Birth by Sleep. He moves this piece right here, being Ansem Seeker of Darkness. Sora falling, it ain't Kingdom Hearts without someone falling. Every opening has someone falling, like really. It quickly transitions to Sora's crown piece. Look at that smug look on his face, that smile on young Xehanort. Like he's enjoying this. It's as if he's imagining things. Now hold up, before this happens, notice those four waves of smoke, black smoke, surrounding Sora. There's a total of four. And then we transition to four pieces surrounding Sora. Four dark pieces to be precise. Now it's a neat detail I wanted to talk about. Does this mean anything? I mean, looking at one of the pieces, we have Luxord's piece, Dice. Sora didn't deal with Luxord in Cage 1. I mean, he is in his Kingdom Hearts 1 outfit. The important message we're getting from this is, young Xehanort is imagining a scenario in his head while playing this, and what he sees is visualized in this opening, but ultimately, this chess game 
is foreshadowing the final battle. But not everything that happens on the board 100% happened accurately in the games. Here, again, if you pause one certain frame or two, they show Sora falling from the sky into darkness. Very, very hard to notice, but I wanted to point it out. The trailer was simply edited this way. Do I have to explain what this means, Sora falling from the sky? I mean, the young Zangot is moving a bunch of pieces around, showing how Sora went from one challenge to another. Even this scene, Xemnas just walking like that, past Roxas. It's Xemnas's piece being moved. So, this trailer, guys, they used the chessboard as its basis, which is pretty cool. I'm not saying there is a Roxas piece on the chessboard. I don't recall seeing a Roxas piece, but, you know, the board is ultimately the center of the opening, which is uh, pretty cool. This part, Xion's hair, I'm not gonna say anything really, okay? Either the lighting making it look brighter, or this is just Xion as Sora under the robe. If you watch this full screen, well, for me, I noticed brown. Some people are saying, oh, it could be white. Okay, but I don't understand why they would spoil Xion getting norded. If the purpose of this sneak peek was not to spoil anything, they didn't show much, it was just a recap. So why would they spoil Xion being norded? Not to mention her only being norded. I mean, if she was norded in this trailer, why wouldn't they show, let's say, white hair on Marluxia? Why only Xion in particular? Talking about Marluxia, he has blue eyes in this one. Guys, as I said, this is a recap. This is going back to Chain of Memories. If Xion, I'm gonna say it again, if she had white hair, Marluxia would have yellow eyes. You get what I'm saying here? Talking about eyes, let's move on to young Xehanort. First and foremost, what's the big deal with purple shining on his pupils? Well, he is staring at what seems to look like a fading star, in my opinion. A fading star represents a world losing its light. A world getting swallowed by the darkness, or a star can represent a person's heart. Ericus being one prime example. But why purple, you might ask? Does it have a certain meaning? What does purple uh, represent? This is Kingdom Hearts uh, we're talking about, folks, okay? So everything means something. <laughs> Nothing is a coincidence. Purple symbolizes ambition and power. That's one of the traits of the color purple. Ambition and power, I think uh, that uh, does represent Xehanort. Do you agree or disagree? We do have that same exact color on Xehanort's orb, which brought upon Kingdom Hearts from the Hearts of Worlds, but that wasn't the true Kingdom Hearts, which is hidden deep within the Realm of Darkness. But why purple again, if that is indeed a dying star? Let's talk about basic science. <laughs> Okay, stars emit a range of wavelengths, not one. How humans perceive light of the stars, while well, we can't see purple. What we pretty much see is like reddish, yellow, orange, that those colors. We don't see all the colors from the spectrum. Applying this to Kingdom Hearts, Xehanort sees something others can't see. And let's go back to what he said in the 2015 trailer. The future, it's already been written. Why did he say that? Yes, he's playing chess. Maybe it was mainly talking about the chessboard, him imagining stuff. But really, did he see something others couldn't see? Do we have to go back to the old theory of Lushu using vessels to move through time? Lushu ultimately using a vessel being their teacher? Seeing something in Xehanort telling him something about the future? But Lushu didn't have the Book of Prophecies. But somehow, who knows what time... Lushu found out what's written in the book, and this future I'm referring to is when he taught young Ericus and young Xehanort, but you know, I don't want to dive into Union Cross right now, so let's leave it at that. Another big thing people have been discussing a lot, probably the biggest thing in this trailer, the color gray for his eyes. Guys, <laughs> this could ultimately be a mistake. Example of this, let's go back to 0.2's error. Ven Vanitas having blue eyes, he was supposed to have yellow, and they fixed it. Gray in this opening could have been an artistic liberty. Purple shining on gray probably just looked better. Or if you want to go with nothing is ever a coincidence notion in Kingdom Hearts, fine. Gray to yellow could mean corruption, but not the type of darkness corruption you're thinking, okay? Bright yellow means joy specifically. Is yellow the right term to be using when describing Xehanort? I guess you could argue, his joy being forging the Keyblade and summoning Kingdom Hearts. Look at his smile in this opening. But really, once yellow is tainted, it becomes an unpleasant color, which could symbolize deceit 
and cowardice. Looking at this one, his eyes aren't shiny pure yellow. There is a bit of dark in it. Xehanort being a coward? I mean, sure, we could fit that in his uh, description. But in Kingdom Hearts mainly, folks, yellow, so far, has been a Xehanort influence. It's never been confirmed that yellow means darkness. But what about Vanitas, you might say? He did have yellow eyes, yes. Possibly because he was already norted from the start. This is just a theory, it's never been confirmed. So if yellow doesn't represent darkness, and we're talking about possession, then, you know, we go towards the whole idea of becoming a vessel, which I hope isn't the case. If Xehanort was a puppet this whole time, I don't know what to say. I mean, this huge buildup, only to realize that he's been used by someone. Probably Master of Masters or Lushu, you know, but no. Grey could simply be a mistake. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with time, okay? But I'd like to hear your own idea on his gray eyes. Last thing for the video, let's uh, make a summary of all of the chess pieces we've seen so far. For the dark pieces, we have Vanitas, Young Xehanort, and some Seeker of Darkness. This one I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna go with Vexen. It looks like it. The top does remind me of the shield a bit. Okay, if this is Vexen, then that means he is indeed Norded. They're not tricking or applying artificial yellow lenses to trick people, Vexen, he's part of the 13 Darknesses. Number 5 is the only one I'm having so much difficulty with. Is it Xion? Is it Data Riku? Where's Zaldin? This could maybe be Zaldin if we look at some of his nobodies, uh, the symbol looks similar? But I'm not too sure about number 5. 6. Luxord. 7. Marluxia. 8. Zigbar. If you look at his weapon from Birth by Sleep. 9. Demix. Also a bit tricky, but if Vexen is indeed Norded, seeing as how Demix also has yellow eyes, then same applies here. That could be Demix. Larxene. Saix. Xemnas. Old Man Xehanort. 14. I believe that could be Terranort. But the same piece is found in the light section. So that's why I think this is Terranort. As for the light pieces, Sora. Ventus, I believe this is part of his keychain, Wayward Wind. Riku, being the heart? From uh, Way to Dawn, Mickey represent well, Mickey's obvious. Kyrie, Papu Fruit, six Aqua Stormfall keychain, I think. Number seven, Terra. This piece right here was also part of the dark pieces. So would it be far fetched to say that Terra is going to get saved? But as for Terra Nord, he's part of the thirteen darknesses. What would you say? Now going back to the 2015 trailer, Terra's piece on the light section, there's duplicates. I'm not gonna break my head over it. All right, it's an old trailer so maybe that was just a mistake? It's just me, alright? I'm just gonna stick to that. For now, okay. Last thing, the opening itself, guys. Superb. Now the models, they look different. Not in a bad way, but they're really close to their in-game models. As for this part, the Keyblades falling, hmm. Hmm, is it a throwback to the secret ending in Kingdom Hearts 2, right? Oh, and let's not forget the music. Oof. I'm not saying oof in a way I dislike it. No, no, no. I'm talking about oof because a lot of people seem to dislike it. But I really like it. I think people uh, believe the part with Skrillex is a bit too overwhelming, too out there, too sudden. People have been talking about how the movements aren't synchronized with the tone of the music, the parts. But as I said before, this is just a sneak peek. Everything's been edited. When I heard that Skrillex would be collabing with Utada, Skrillex being a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts, I knew what the feel of his music with Utada would be like. So I'm not surprised by the beat drop. Some people have been saying the beat drop is too soft. So get it? There's a lot of mixed feelings, a lot of different stuff people are saying about this opening. But I like the music. I think I've listened to it probably 50 times now. And yeah, don't forget Kingdom Hearts 1's opening, Simple and Clean Remixed, it did have a techno remix. So it's not out of the ordinary for Kingdom Hearts 3 to have this type of beat being part of the music. But anyways, I'd like to hear your own thoughts about the movements, the visuals, the music, and everything. Share anything you want in the comment section below. And as always, guys, I've been Vivi, and thank you so much for watching.